Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the first video on creating a multiplayer FPS in Unity. So this is a subject requested by so many of you guys and I thought I would finally go ahead and cover this in a series. And it's a great time to do so because Unity quite recently released uh, UNet or Unity Networking which is their new networking solution and I can tell you it's, it's actually pretty great. So that's what we're going to be doing and uh, we're going to be creating uh, the game in C Sharp and I do expect you to have some understanding of basic Unity concepts and programming concepts but that being said I will explain a lot of stuff along the way as much as possible. Cool? So before we go ahead and get started with today's video which is setting up our player and uh, the player controls uh, I just quickly want to mention that if you want to support uh, me and this series and the other series I've going, uh, you can go to brekkies.com and I do have a donate button here. It helps out a lot and keeps me going. And also, if you have any questions uh, throughout this course, I suggest you go to forum.brekkies.com where you can uh, make a, a post or a topic here and you will almost certainly get some answers. Cool. So... I just quickly want to give you a taste of uh, what it is we're going to be making and I don't know how much of it we're going to be able to cover in this first video but you can see here I've made this test scene and this is just a project I use for uh, testing some stuff out and uh, this is the actual player and I know that he looks kind of funny but I was uh, thinking that we could make this uh, kind of sci-fi like and make him some kind of uh, spherish uh, robot uh, with a thruster down here and have the weapon rotate around this sphere and therefore because he's kind of levitating in the air while we play I've made the controls uh, almost spring-like and I've made uh, him uh, give, gave, given him the ability to uh, fly so we have these thruster force and fuel and regen speed and uh, controls down here and you can see that I've created a player motor and a player controller script um, which which actually controls his movement so that's what we're going to be looking at today and if I go ahead and hit play here and drag the game over here so you can see what's happening to the controller you can see that we can look around like this we can also of course move around and this is not smoothed out yet that's something we can do in a in a future video and then you can see that I can fly away here. And uh, when I run out of thruster, I simply fall to the ground. And you can see just how smooth that is when I use the thrusters here. And that's something you can completely control how, how much dampening and spring effect you want on that. But I think this should give some really cool uh, controls that are not just like any other FPS. Cool. You can, of course, use this tutorial for creating a completely ordinary uh, first-person uh, character, but uh, then you might as well use the standard assets one. Cool, so let's go ahead and close down that project. And uh, I've created uh, beforehand here a new one called Multiplayer FPS. It's a completely empty project, and uh, I just set the defaults to 3D. And uh, in here you can see I have an empty project folder. So let's go ahead and right click on that, import package and then environment. And this will just allow us to use some of the, uh, whoops, not in environment, that was wrong, import package prototyping. Uh, because uh, Unity has some uh, quite nice uh, prototyping prefabs like the floor plane and some of the cubes that you saw me using. And you can see that if you go under standard assets, prototyping models, there are a lot of different stuff that we can use here. So let's just take the big floor prototype, the 64 by 64, and drag it in here. And let's also take a, uh, a couple of cubes, maybe the 4 uh, by 4 ones, and just uh, place them on the ground. So let's just place one there, duplicated, move one over here. And let's take a smaller one too. Whoops, is that bigger? That's a lot. Nope, it's just being placed placed wrongly. So let's just drag it in here and reset the transform. There we go, and we can just drag it over here, just so we have something to orient ourselves in the scene. 
And uh, right now all of the colors here are fairly boring uh, and that's something we can change uh, soon. For now let's just get uh, cracking on the uh, player controls. So up here let's uh, create an empty uh, game object. Let's reset the transform on this and let's call this underscore environment. You don't need the underscore here. Uh, it's just a habit of mine whenever I create uh, these kind of uh, grouping objects. Uh, but actually let's just go ahead and delete that. That's unnecessarily confusing. And let's just take all of this stuff, including the light, and drag it under there. So now we have this clean hierarchy up here and the main camera, which we are going to just uh, delete uh, because we are going to be creating one for the player instead. And because I excessively save all of my scenes, let's press Control S and just uh, save the scene here. So um, I'm just going to call this uh, main level uh, one so far uh, because we don't know what this is actually going to be doing yet. Cool, so let's start building our player. So we are going to start completely from scratch uh, and we are going to do so using a uh, a sphere. So let's right click on this, go under game object uh, or 3D object sphere, reset the transform on that and uh, let's set the uh, position uh, on the Y axis to one. And this looks uh, nice already. And uh, let's go ahead and remove the mesh renderer and the mesh sphere here. And uh, let's create another uh, object under this, an empty object. Again, make sure that's reset. And let's rename this to graphics. And under this, we create, create a, another sphere and remove, we remove the collider on this. So this way we have the graphics separated uh, from the collider and we can move those separately. That's just a nice thing to do. Uh, so we can call this player model here. And this is of course temporary. And then uh, the sphere here, we can go ahead and call player. Awesome. Uh, so we're going to need a bunch of stuff on uh, this player. First off, we're going to need a a camera. So let's just create a camera object and that's going to sit inside of our sphere. So just reset the transform on that and that should be fine. And uh, and this has all of the uh, default settings which are going to be uh, fine for now. And so that we know which way our player is uh, facing, let's go ahead and create a temporary gun model uh, under this camera. So let's hit, uh, right click, go on the 3D object, select cube. And let's give this a, a cool darkened material. So let's go down here, right click, create material, and let's call this gun material for now. And uh, let's change the albedo to a grayer, uh, grayer color here and drag it, oops, make sure you drag it onto the cube here like this. And let's make it kind of dark and uh, that should be just fine. And the uh, smoothness here I'm going to drag all the way down so that this isn't shine. Okay, we can give it a bit of shine there. That looks fine. And uh, we can go ahead and rename this. Uh, actually, let's uh, create another object here, another empty object. Reset that. Let's call this one gun. And let's drag the cube under that gun object. We can then move this out. And then we can start uh, modeling our gun here. Awesome. So uh, now that we have that in place, we can go ahead and actually create uh, some logic for our player because not right now when we play the game, of course, uh, nothing is going to happen whatsoever. So we can start out by creating a rigid body uh, on our uh, uh, player, our root object here. And we can set the mass to one, that's fine. I do want some drag, uh, but we're gonna leave it at zero and then I'll show you what drag does uh, later. Um, so constraints, uh, we're going to freeze all of the rotation because that's only going to be driven uh, by, by our mouse. But I don't want to freeze the position because I want to be able to be affected uh, by uh, stuff in our scene when it comes to position. Then we want to uncheck uh, use gravity. Uh, because we want this guy to be floating. And uh, we're going to make the nice bounciness using uh, some kind of uh, spring component. Uh, but that's something that we'll add in later. 
So uh, this should be the basic setup for our rigid body. And then I want to make two scripts. So the first one is going to be our uh, player motor new scripts of type C sharp. And the second one is going to be our player controller. So when it comes to movement, there is a million ways of doing things. And uh, I've tried here to find a nice balance between optimization and readability. Uh, so when it comes to like thinking about how we want this movement to work, I think it's uh, logically uh, a great idea to split it up into two scripts. We have the controller, which handles all of the input and uh, stuff like uh, how much fuel is left, is we, are we jumping, or what way should we be looking. And then we have the motor, which simply has a set of functions which will move, uh, move the player, make him jump, uh, and uh, make him fly, all of that. So that doesn't handle any of the actual input. It's just uh, kind of, you could call it a utility script that will uh, take directions uh, and velocities and all that and apply them to the rigid body. So that's kind of uh, the way you should look at these two scripts. You have the controller and the actual motor that drives it. And uh, if we go ahead and uh, double click on these, it's going to open up in uh, Visual Studio. And yes, I'm using Visual Studio. It's something that comes with Unity now. And if you want to be using Visual Studio instead of uh, Mano Develop, which I do recommend that you do, then go under Edit, uh, then preferences, external tools, and choose Visual Studio 2015. And if it's not there, you can browse for it. Cool. So it's opening up uh, Visual Studio here and should be ready in just a second. And there we go. It loaded on my other screen. And uh, let's just uh, load up the player controller too. So we ha have these two right here. I'm just going to close the scripting API. So uh, the player motor is going to require a component type of rigid body because we want to always have a rigid body with our character mo uh, player motor. I'm also going to delete that uh, using statement there because it's not needed. And uh, in here, we are going to have some uh, methods for uh, actually making our player uh, move. But first off, let's look over in the player controller. Well, the player controller, we can delete that too, is going to require another component. And this is going to require type of player motor. So when adding a player controller, it's going to add a player motor, which is going to add a rigid body. We, we've already added a rigid body, but just in case, it's a good idea to uh, do it like that. Awesome. So the first thing that we are going to be creating here is uh, the actual movement. So we can start out by uh, making a serialized field private float called speed and set this to uh, something like 10 or maybe 5. It's going to be fine. And if you don't know, marking something as serialized field will basically make it show up in the inspector even though it's uh, set to private. So this is the exact same as doing public serialized field, even though it's still, uh, but it's still protected. Uh, so, so that's really good. So uh, then we can make a private reference to our player motor and we'll just call this motor. And uh, we can set this in the start method. We'll just set motor equal to get component player motor. And this is where the um, required component is really awesome because we don't have to do any checking or error handling. We know that there's going to be a player motor on this uh, game object. Then inside of our update method, void update, uh, we are simply going to calculate uh, our movement velocity as a 3D vector. So uh, basically, we're first going to get our uh, horizontal movement. So we're going to store that as a float. And uh, let's just call this uh, x move. And uh, the underscore here is, of course, optional. I just like to do this with variables creating, created within a uh, method. So x movement is going to be equal to input.getAxis. 
and I'm going to choose get access raw because I want to do uh, my looping on uh, my own. So if we want any kind of smoothing here, it's good uh, to be in complete control on uh, of how we do that. And uh, if you use get access, well then Unity is going to perform some processing on it and you won't be in full control. So by default, uh, let's uh, get the raw access and then let's perform our own smoothing later. And the access that we want to get here is the horizontal axis. Then we want another float and we'll call this the move and we'll set this to input dot get access raw and then uh, vertical and of course the axis that we are axes we are getting here are set up uh, inside of unity so if we go in here go under edit um, project settings input axis and uh, you can see here that we have the horizontal and the vertical. So that's where we are getting these from. And uh, if you're not aware, um, whenever we use a keyboard or a controller, horizontal is going to go between uh, minus one and one. And vertical is going to also go between minus one and one. So we can use those um, to uh, do perform our movement on the two axes. Then we're going to create a vector three and we'll call this move horizontal and we're going to set it equal to transform dot right that's going to be our uh, direction to the right uh, but this is going to be uh, local so uh, when using transform dot right instead of vector three dot right we'll take into consideration our current rotation which way we are facing and it won't just be relative to the world so transform dot right and then we'll multiply this by our uh, x movement and we're going to do the same make a vector here called move vertical set it equal to transform dot forward so this is our forward uh, movement and uh, we're going to set that equal to uh, or, or multiply that with our c movement so transform dot right is a, a vector uh, with the values um, zero, uh, 1, comma 0, comma 0. And uh, the uh, transform.forward is a vector with uh, 0, comma 0, comma 1. And then we multiply this value into it. So if uh, we don't move at all, this is going to be 0, 0, 0. If we're moving forward, then this is going to be 1, 0, 0. And if we're moving backwards, this is going to be minus 0, 0. So, or minus 1, 0, 0. And the same down here. So this is just the value that's going to change. So if we're not moving, if we're moving, and if uh, we are moving backwards. That's the result of this calculation. So we can use this quite effectively to get kind of our um, local direction or our local um, velocity vector. And uh, then we can compile these two into our final velocity vector. And we're going to simply uh, combine them by saying move horizontal plus move vertical. And then we're going to normalize them and multiply them Oops. <laughs> multiply them by our speed variable. So what we are doing here is we are combining the two. When normalizing, we're saying that, well, the length of these shouldn't matter. So when we are combining them, we are saying that the total length of this combined vector should be one. And that means that we won't get uh, a varying speed when multiplying these. We will always get a vector with the length of one. And uh, that basically means that we are only using this as a direction that we then multiply with a speed. Cool. <clears throat> and uh, then we apply this movement. So uh, this is going to be our final movement uh, vector. And then we apply our movement. 
And we do this by calling some kind of function on the motor. And we're going to make, make this in a sec. And we'll just call this uh, function uh, move and we'll pass in the velocity vector. So now we can jump over to a player motor and actually make this happen. So the video kind of went on for a lot longer than I had expected. So I'm sorry, but I have to cut this up into two parts. I hope that you will enjoy the next one as much as you've enjoyed this one, if at all. And uh, I'll upload it as soon as I can. I'll see you in the next video.